My phone used to rule me. The second I'd wake up, I'd be reaching for the bedside counter so I could get my first hit of dopamine. Going from Instagram to Pornhub to some random fucking video game. Then I'd check the clock in despair as I realized I'd wasted two hours already. I was supposed to be having a productive day. Before I'd even take a shower or brush my teeth, I'd have to find the perfect YouTube video to be playing in the background. And when I finally start working, I'd be bouncing between 50 different tabs I had open on my computer, constantly refreshing Instagram on my phone like this. I'd end the day with a massive headache, with my eyes all crispy and just a thousand different random thoughts going through my head that I didn't know what to do with. I promised myself that the next day would be different, that I'd finally get some real work done. But as soon as I'd wake up, I'd pick up my phone once again. So just out of curiosity, how many of you are watching this video with your phone out at the same time? With multiple tabs out in front of you or other screens playing in the background? And this is not me trying to insult you. Think about how it's suddenly become a normal thing be switching between multiple screens constantly. Like I was in the cinema the other day and there was this kid there who paid for a ticket. He paid to come and watch this movie and he was playing a game on his phone for half of the runtime at least. If people nowadays can't even focus on a movie where all you have to do is just sit still and watch, what do you think is going to happen when you put some real work in front of them? A big part of why I believe my generation is so emotionally fragile and has close to zero resilience or coping skills is because we are in this constant state of overstimulation. Whether it's doom scrolling on TikTok, watching porn, playing League of Legends for five hours straight, we're just constantly being fucked by this never-ending stream of sensory information. And we know all that leads to is headaches, bad concentration, low levels of energy, and feeling like life is a bit meaningless. But at the same time, we can't do anything else. We'll still wake up and repeat the exact same habits each and every day. And to tell you the truth, that's because our brains are simply not adapted to the modern world. And understanding how to fix this problem problem starts with a chemical called dopamine. Now if you imagine our brain as this huge network that regulates our body and controls how we perceive and interact with the world, the neurons are the individual points and nodes in this network that each have their own special function. And in order to maintain that network and keep everything up and running, those neurons need a way to communicate and send information from one area of the body to another, basically just to make things happen. So to do this, they use these messenger chemicals called neurotransmitters, and the most well known neurotransmitter is dopamine. Now what makes dopamine just so important is it's the reward system of our brain. It's designed to help us form habits, specifically the habits that boost our odds of survival. So when you start thinking about something that you associate with reward, say your favourite food, your brain releases a little bit of dopamine to make you start craving that food, to fill your head with thoughts of how good that would taste. And what that does is it has the effect of motivating you to get up and actually go out and look for the food or make it. Then later, as you're performing the activity itself, say you're cooking the food, your brain gradually starts to give you more and more dopamine to ensure that you stay focused on that ultimate reward. Then finally, when you reach the reward phase, you're eating the food, your dopamine levels peak, they reach their highest point and you get that incredible feeling of satisfaction. And what that does is ensure that you repeat the activity on later occasions so you can get that same feeling of satisfaction again. Now, I hope you're following along with that little science lesson. Now, for a very long time, that system worked. It kept the human race alive and striving to be better. And in a perfect world, that system would still work as intended. In the modern world, dopamine is about a thousand times easier to obtain. You're hungry, here's McDonald's delivered to your doorstep in 20 minutes. You're bored, here's 50 different movies on Netflix that we think you'll like. You're horny, here's 200 different categories of porn for you to fap to. Whereas before you had to take some form of action, something that would take time to attain that reward, nowadays you barely have to lift a finger. But you know, I'm surely that's positive. I mean, how can less work be a bad thing? Well, the problem is most people have a quick and reliable source of dopamine on them at all times. And with that being the case, it's pretty difficult to focus on anything else. And you'll know what I'm talking about here. We've all had those occasions where we're supposed to be working on a pretty important task. A task that we would feel very good about getting done, but at the same time, it's going to take a lot of effort to reach that reward. You know, you might have to sustain focus on one thing for a couple of hours. It's going to take a lot of concentration. And compared to the low effort dopamine we get from screens, it's just boring. Through our phones, we have access to a multi multitude of apps, social media and notifications that are just constantly updating and each new piece of information is a reward for your brain. So what that means is that we gradually check our phone more frequently in anticipation of that reward and the fact that it is so easy to obtain our rewards that way means our brain develops a preference for those quick dopamine activities rather than the things that take concentration, which I probably don't have to explain 
brain is absolutely devastating for our focus and attention span. We're quite literally watching a generation get dumber in real time. But believe it or not, that's not even the worst part. There is a much darker side effect of this overstimulation cycle. The amount and speed at which we get dopamine now is completely incomparable to anything from our past. It is totally unnatural and our brains are just not made to handle it. So in response to those elevated levels of dopamine, our brain adapts. Our dopamine receptors become less sensitive, meaning they are less responsive to the everyday pleasures of life. So the things that once brought you the most joy, spending time with your family, enjoying your favorite meal, will no longer give you the same feeling of satisfaction. Over time, it just gets replaced with this nothingness, this indifference to life. And I don't know about you, but to me, what I just described sounds like a living hell. Is life really worth living if we can't enjoy those simple everyday pleasures? And that should help you understand just how much this tech has a hold on our society and honestly, just how evil these Silicon Valley nerds are. By purposely making their apps more addictive, they are stealing happiness from you. I know you want to hold on to that happiness to those special times. And I can also guess that you want to set yourself apart from the average person who can't even focus on one task for more than 10 minutes. So I'm going to help you out by going over exactly what I did to solve my overstimulation problem. So make sure your phone's turned off and you're paying attention because what I'm about to say might just change your life. So this first thing I'm going to tell you is something that you could do right now. In fact, I literally recommend that you do it as I'm saying this. So go and get your phone or whichever device you're most addicted to, put it in a Tupperware box and literally seal the lid. From now on, this is your phone's new home whenever you're not using it. Now the second thing I want you to do is take that box and put it in an entirely separate room. Not your bedroom, but literally any other room of the house. Now that particular room has become the only room that you're allowed to use your phone. In. Now that might seem a bit weird, but I promise you those are two very important steps. So let me break it down for you. So one of the biggest dilemmas that I'm sure we can all agree on is that checking our phones literally don't have any positive outcomes. Like 95% of the time, the notification is just some bullshit that we would rather have not seen. And it serves as a distraction from whatever task we were supposed to be focusing on. So we know that, but it still doesn't stop us. Because as I explained before, before, we've reinforced that behavior of checking your phone as a habit. And what you've got to understand about habits is that they're largely unconscious. We don't even think about them, we just do it. And this is going to sound like an overly simplistic solution to that problem I just told you about, but bear with me. The key to fixing that problem is to think more about it. We have to become more intentional about our use of tech. So human beings are actually very simplistic creatures. We like to overcomplicate things, but we're very simple. If we have a temptation in our line of sight or even behind Behind us just in close proximity to us then we're going to be tempted by it so the first step of being more intentional about our use of tech is to physically distance yourself from it so i think that we've built up such a dependency on our devices that they're almost an extension of us like if you told most gen zers that you were going to hide their phone for two hours they would probably have a panic attack but what i found is that by putting those two physical barriers in place you know the tupperware box and also placing your phone in a dedicated tech room i've almost created these mental boundaries in my head that changed my attitude towards the technology. Something about sealing the lid on that Tupperware box signals to my brain that I'm done with this. It's time to focus on something else. And it allows my mind to disengage with the online world and whatever bullshit I was looking at. And then in designating the rest of the house as tech free, if you can commit to that, then your brain will build up this mental association with the other rooms of the house and the absence of technology. Now that might not make a lot of sense at first, but it works in reverse. I'm sure a lot of you have this existing mental association with lying down on your bed and going on your phone. So in the same way you do that, we're trying to impose the opposite boundary. We're signaling to our brain that this space is not for mindless scrolling, this space is for reading, this space is for getting important work done. Now just as a side note, the reason I said don't make your dedicated tech zone the same room as your bedroom is also because of those mental associations that we have. In fact, I actually feel the same way about people who do all their important work in their bedroom. Because a lot of people don't realise that doing things other than sleep in your bedroom can make it very difficult for you to unwind at night because you're conditioning your brain to stay awake and stay focused rather than getting into that relaxed state of mind before you go to sleep. When you walk in your bedroom, you should start to feel a little bit tired because of that mental association with sleep. So if you care about things like your sleep quality, then keep your bedroom just for sleep. So sorry for going off on a little tangent there, but just to reiterate what I was saying before, imposing those physical boundaries will help you break the habit of constantly needing to check your phone and also allow you to fully disengage with the online world and really put your mind at ease when you need to relax. Okay, so moving on, this next part is gonna be difficult for some people. In fact, it's probably gonna be difficult for most people I know, but I promise you, this has 
been one of the only truly life-changing pieces of advice I can say I've been given. So listen up. In a time where I was very depressed and addicted to social media, porn and video games, this was the thing that turned it around for me. But first, you've got to ask yourself this question. When did you last find yourself feeling bored and not immediately rush to find something to entertain yourself with or something to occupy your mind? I would bet money that most of you can't remember. And one of the fucked up realities that I've come to realize is that distraction is now our default state. We can't stand in line anymore without checking our phone. We can't go for a walk without listening to music. We're constantly lusting after dopamine. Most of us will go an entire day without a single moment where we're truly alone with our thoughts and it's that fear of boredom that leads us to developing these unconscious habits and coping mechanisms that are ruining our life that are turning us into dopamine junkies so the next way we can become more intentional surrounding our use of tech is to embrace boredom one of the biggest lies we tell ourselves is that boredom is a bad thing and you know boredom has a lot of negative connotations but i like to look at boredom as the polar opposite of overstimulation think of how it feels to be overstimulated you know you've got a headache your eyes feel fried from looking at a screen for too long and you just feel mentally exhausted. Boredom is the opposite of that. It's letting your mind rest and recharge instead of overloading it with information. Boredom is actually one of the most peaceful states of mind we can reach but we've just got so used to filling the silence as quickly as possible that we've lost sight of that. So what you really want to do is expose yourself to moments of boredom. Whenever you feel it coming on, embrace it instead of seeking some bullshit distraction. You have to build a tolerance for it. Instead of instantly reaching for your device anytime you feel bored. Intentionally delay the response. Allow yourself to sit with the discomfort of feeling bored for, for a little while and just see how your mind responds and adjusts. And over time, I promise you'll become more comfortable with the sensation of boredom and much less reliant on distraction. And if you want to speed up this process and really fortify your mind against overstimulation, don't just wait for the boredom to hit. Look for opportunities to resist those distractions. Go for a walk and leave your phone at home. No airpods, no music, no nothing. And instead of watching something every time you eat, just focus on the goddamn food. Schedule enough activities that require some level of boredom into your routine and you'll eventually rewire your brain so it's not so focused on distractions, low effort dopamine. So that's all from me today. Stay sharp, stay ahead. I'm out.